What's up? It's your boy LaPat in the building, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Reverse that car, girl, I'm fucking right now. Climb on the stand, the rail, pick and handle it. Beat that kid up when it's down, put it down. Let's make a... All right, so we got my guy, LaPat, jumping off the porch with us today, man. Facts, Welcome, bro. Facts. Thank you for having me, brother. Nah, I appreciate you coming by the stuff and, you know, messing with us, man. Hear the story and everything, sure. too, man. For sure. Yeah, so first off, how are we feeling today, man? I'm feeling good. I'm a little high, but I'm straight. We rocking out. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's what's good, man. So, you know, shout out your people sitting back there today, too, man. Let everyone know who's who. I got the best stylist I know, Charlie Chuck. You know what I mean? She's still, she always got me dripping, for sure. There you go. I got my manager, MCD Swift, my guy, my main guy. I got my DJ, my only DJ, DJ A on the building. I got my camera guy, DJ 89 Ray. And I got my road dog, which is my road manager, Big Al in the building, man. It's good. Got the whole team with you. Yeah, I got my team with me. They they got me here, so I need them to be here with me at all costs. You know what I mean? Nah, that's love right there, man. So what you been working on since you touched down in the city, man? Uh, wrapped up a few interviews. I got a show tonight for the Who's Next. Oh, so okay. Yeah. Bless the stage one time. Bring the rodeo right here to the A. Yes, sir. I mean, but we just been working, you know, making connections, shaking hands. Mm -hmm. And, you know, making good relationships. Nah, definitely, man. How do you like hitting the road, you know, networking in different cities, man? You man, know, I love it. Being able to perform in different crowds, too, man. Facts. And, and the, good, the good thing is I get a good response. I haven't got, like, a city where I'd be like, man, yeah, they ain't messing with me out there. I ain't, I ain't get that yet. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? So, and I ain't going to say get that yet because I don't feel like I'm going to get that. I yeah. feel like it's good, it's love. And bro, I touch down, they expecting the rodeo for sure. Nah, definitely, man. Nah, that's hard right there, bro. So, you know, let's dive into the story, though, man. Let's go. So, originally from the N.O. Yeah, um, born and raised. So I always got to ask, man, what part of New Orleans are you from? Originally? I'm from Uptown, the 11 Wall. I was born in 11 Wall. Okay. And you lived there up until Katrina, right? Yeah, I, yeah during the storm. Then we moved to Houston. Okay. <clears throat> Stayed in Houston for like two years. Hmm. Then I went right back home. Oh, for real? Yeah, I went back to New Orleans. My mama just was like homesick. She was like, you know, searching. We were trying to figure it out. But, you know, I ran into some trouble out there. Right, Started getting in trouble, kicked out of school. And she's like, nah, we're going back to Texas. <laughs> For real. But it was like kind of different. It was like, I'm like a sponge, you know what I mean? Hmm. So taking me out of an environment don't mean you left that environment there. The environment's still with me. Yeah. So then I came to another environment and I learned some new stuff. Got some new, you know what I mean? Soaked up some more type of different game and it just created one big problem. Yeah, you know I mean, then they locked me up. For real, I was only out there like a year. Oh, was that soon? Yeah, really? I, I moved back in 2010 and caught my case in 2011. Oh, wow. For real. True. And you were what, just 16 at the time? 16. Or? Damn. I was my 10th grade year. So, would you say that's when you jumped off the porch or were you off the porch way before then? then? Uh, I, honestly, I said I jumped off the porch when I first moved to Houston. Like, okay. Growing up in New Orleans in the beginning was kind of like church. I was with my like family things, you know. I didn't really get to explore. And mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I went to Houston and it felt like the land of the free. So my mom ain't really put a lot of restrictions on me. So I used to go everywhere. And like I said, I was a sponge. Mm -hmm. So I first started smoking. And I mean, finally first bought my gun. I wasn't number like 14 at that time. You oh, know wow. what I'm saying? But Houston was based off of getting you some money. So now I'm, I'm having, you know, back then it, I was it was more so of just chilling. You know what I mean? Be able to go places, but. Now I had some money in my pocket at a young age. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I went after that, gotta give me some money. Now I'm about yeah. some money. But then I go, I moved back to New Orleans and it's like, it, ain't even, it wasn't even about money like that. It was about just street cred. Mm -hmm. So to have street cred and you to have you some money, cause a lot of guys didn't have no money. You know what I mean? I was a young dude with some money. So it was just like an enhancement for me. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But, I was in Houston and Acres home, jumped off the porch. To okay. Be now, do you have any siblings, or was it just you and your mom? Was your pops around? I got too? three little sisters, but okay. You know them girls. They was kind of <laughs> me. I was outside. Yeah. I had to be outside. So, did you have any uh, like male role models in your life at that time? Um, I wouldn't say so. Uh, the early life in New Orleans, I looked up to my uncle a lot. You know what I mean? Okay. Which is like one of my main producers right now. Shout out to Johnny Made It. Um. Everything he did, I did. He played the drums in church, I played the drums too. Huh. He marched in the band, I marched in the band too. Like, you know what I mean? It was kind of like, he was like, the only way I had access to outside. When new music came out, 
if he was on it, he put me on it. When Kanye dropped, he jumped on Kanye, he put me on Kanye. So I got on hold. You know what I mean? Like he gave me, he, he basically taught me like the story behind music, you know what I mean? Because he was so into it. So he made so, you know, I was hip to it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And when I got to Houston, it was kind of like, any nigga with some bread was kind of like, right, I need to be watching what he doing. You know what I mean? He got a nice car, he driving a Camaro, he driving a vet. Like, it was, it was, it was that time to where I knew I wanted something bigger in life. I can't be just, you know what I mean? Riding past the door with my mama. I gotta <laughs> give me some money, for real. I really started going for that goal, but just about the wrong way, you know what I mean? Do you feel like if you would have stayed in New Orleans, that you wouldn't have gotten into the trouble like that, or? Man, honestly, I feel like my story had to go this way. Okay. Like, I feel like if it would have had the smallest crook of just staying in New Orleans, it could have just been over for me. I wasn't going down the right path. Like, I ain't really, I didn't say I was on chest Charlie, but I was fearless. Like, I wasn't worried about the day-to-day the -day things I worry about today as an adult. Like, I'm even more older now, and I'm just more like, Certain situations, I'd be telling the team, like, hey, we're going to just slide off that. We ain't. But back then, it was whatever. Yeah. It was, let's get it. You feel me? You know what I mean? I, but I was young, and I was being led wrong. You know what I mean? And, I, and it wasn't even just a role model thing. It was just more so of, you getting you some money, so obviously you're doing something right. So whatever you tell me, I'm going to just have to take it for gold. But I wasn't doing no research. Yeah. I ain't never go. Didn't know those nah, consequences I, yeah, behind nah, some of nah, this shit. Nah, I ain't know. You know what I mean? I just believe whatever you told me like that time. Because, like, you here, you ain't in jail. You give me some money. You, it's a way to get around it. <laughs> nah, they ain't tell me, like, day-to-day -day struggle of it. Or when you do get caught. Yeah. You know what I mean? They ain't explain none of that to me. Hmm. You feel me? So that's why my biggest advice to people is that there is no big homie. You know what I mean? A big homie ain't going to lead you down the wrong path. Nah, that's now, call yourself my big homie and you willing to watch me fail. Not saying that feeling is bad, it's just, if I got a dude, I'm gonna call him my little homie, I'm gonna make sure I keep it from all the things that I feel will make you feel. Especially if I already went down that pad, I already bumped my head right there, I'm gonna keep you away from that. I'm gonna tell you, hey, nah, my guy, I, I'll tell you what's right there. I, I can already tell you at the end of that road, I was there. They weren't doing that for us, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what's your reaction when they, they give you the sentence? It was eight years at first, right? Yeah. Like, were you prepared so, for that, or was that get, completely catching up? They, they started off at 40. Whew. You know what I mean? And they were trying to try me as an adult. They were trying to ship me over. I was 16. I was getting close to my 17th birthday. Mm -hmm. So that was the fight first to make them keep me as a juvenile, because I know in Texas, the max you could get is 30 years. Even though that's a big time, but I'm like, that's just a little bit more than 40. You know what I mean? <laughs> I could just, if I could shave 10 off of just by keeping me in this place, then I could fight another fight. So I won that battle, then there was like at 20 as a juvenile. True. And I'm like, bro, first of all, I didn't even do this. <laughs> and I, and I, I just got to keep it solid at the most. Like, I know my only way out of that situation was to tell. Hmm. Like facts, like, you know what I mean? That's the first day they come with it. Before they got their evidence, before they got anything, they like, give it up, we'll let you free. Yeah, because they don't want to do the work. Nah, nah. Let's make this job easy for you and me. You get to go home. I get to write my report up and <laughs> ship it off. And I'm like, I can't. I can't tell them nobody because I don't know what you're talking about. I wasn't there. Can't tell you the story. I can tell you my rumor I heard, but that's not good for you because it's a rumor. I don't know. I wasn't there. You feel me? But then I, I got, I'm stuck in juvenile. In juvenile Texas, there is no bond. You're stuck in there until your case is either dismissed are you adjudicated? You know what I mean? So when I feel like I was losing the battle, I told my mama, like, all right, look, I'm gonna have to do some time. But now my fight is to get the less time possible. You know what I mean? They offered me four years, and I'm trying to still go down because I'm like, I didn't do it. So if I could walk it down to like some probation, a year, you know what I mean? And they were stuck at that four, and I had a trial. Like, and if people know about trial, it's whatever they give you at that point. Mm -hmm. So on my trial date, Right before it happened, the them coming in and be like, well, we could say, we could not go in this room and, and do the four years. And I was like, all right, can you give me 10 minutes to think about it? And it was like, yeah. Within them 10 minutes, the judge was like, he wants to have the trial. Oh, wow. But I had already told him, like, yeah, I'll take the four, fuck it. You know what I mean? Four, I, I'm trying to weigh my options, think about my age. Like, four years, all right. That's better than 20, that's better than 40, that's better than 10, that's better than five. You know what I mean? Four, all right. I already told my mom I gotta go do some time. Mm -hmm. Man, they take me to trial.
and let them talk, let the people talk and all that. I ain't get to say nothing. I ain't say, nah, you, I ain't get to defend myself. You know what I mean? I ain't, I'm looking at my lawyer like, you just gonna let them <laughs> gonna say let that about happen. me? <laughs> and I'm telling him like, that couldn't be true because I, didn't, I, don't even, I didn't even wear grills. Like, I had braces in my mouth. And I had just got these braces like a month ago while I was already in here. So she couldn't say she recognized me by a grill. And I'm looking like, but it's a quarter point. I ain't have no money to fight. You know what I mean? So I had to just really take a bunch of punches. Shoot. You feel me? Without even trying to get it in. You feel me? And after late talk, he said four years. Hell, give him eight. Like, dang, I'm just doubling. I just wiped my forehead saying I'm just not 10, it's not five. He doubled my... Looked at my mama, and my mama ain't even cry. She wiped my face, she looked at me, she like, you good? And I'm like, all right, I'm good. I'm good, it's cool. I couldn't cry, like, if I cried in front of her, I feel like I would've made her cry. But she looked so strong, she was so like, like, in her head, she was like, you know, pray for the best, but prepare for the worst. Yeah. And at that point, she like, we had another fight, and she hit me with my same line, like, I'm like, all right, let's go. It ended up being what, six years? Yeah, I, I, so yeah, it ended up being five years and nine months originally. Like, that's the, when I first made parole. But I could have did what it was like, two years and went home. Oh, wow. Two years and a half and went home from juvenile. I get to the end of that juvenile sentence, I'm getting close to my 19th birthday, which is a cop out age. And they send me to court again. <laughs> the judge asked me, Do you admit to this case? And I was like, Nah. He told me I didn't, uh, when he said it, uh, I didn't recover, basically. Like, I didn't go down there and, and find the help I need if I still came in front of him and said I didn't do it. And I was like, damn. <laughs> I, 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 I was just telling my manager the other day, I was in there, <clears throat> I was a, fuck it, I'm in juveniles to state school. You gotta go to school every day. I got trades, I'm all in college classes, doing all this to make sure I go home for my 19th birthday. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm speaking in groups. I'm, you know, I didn't, I didn't match all the levels. I'm at the highest level that you can earn in that motherfucker. And you telling me you still finna make me go to prison? I didn't even get to go home in between that point. It was like juvenile court. I had to stay in juvenile for a day till they transferred me and I went straight to state prison. Like, I'm 18, I'm like four, five days from my 19th birthday. You know what I'm saying? It was like crazy. Like, what I, what I did all that shit for? I could have been in that bitch rocking and shocking and having fun too if y'all still gonna shit me off. Like, that's my mind frame. Like, I really fought to gain these fucking achievements from y'all for y'all to still shit me off. Like, to tell me I ain't, I ain't, I ain't get that. But y'all sending motherfuckers home who didn't get a GED down there. You know what I mean? All they doing is saying, yeah, I did it. Now, I'm not <laughs> doing all that, man. I'm not gonna tell myself a lie. You feel me? And at times, you know, you think about it like, well, I should have just fucking said I did it. Mm -hmm. But now nah, I just did. It wasn't it. But I honestly feel like all that shit was part of my journey. You know what I mean? Because I still wasn't ready. Mentally, I wasn't ready. I was still young. And I was thinking about going back and thug. Like, I ain't even know I wanted to do music yet. Like, I know I'm fucking with the music, but I ain't think about it. I'm finna go home and make a career out of it. You know what I mean? I just was already just rapping in jail. When I went to prison, you meet some talented niggas, some niggas who fire, like, and I'm like, I, I'm here for another two years. You know what I mean? Fuck it. Yeah. You know what I mean? First pro come up, they deny me. Because I hadn't gotten a little trouble. I'm in G4, I ain't got the line class, I ain't got the status to make parole. But now I'm like, I hadn't got lost in that motherfucker. You know what I mean? I hadn't day to day life. I'm going to school in that bitch, though. Everywhere I went, I went to school. You know what I mean? It kept me off the dorm, and then they got female teachers. Like, Fuck, I'm gonna be on the door with some plus, niggas, bro. Right. You know what I mean? Fucking right. Then they got AC in the school. You know what I mean? It got so much, and I'm telling niggas, y'all, y'all missing it. You know what I mean? Y'all not really peeping it. Like, I, I can't be mentally trapped in this bitch at all. And then, like, they got incentives in school. We get to watch some of the latest movies. You feel me? Like, so it's like, I seen Fast and the Furious, Fast Five and shit, in there. Them niggas ain't even get to see it yet. You know what I mean? I'm like, cause y'all missing the benefit. Y'all trying to be trapped right here. Like, yeah, I like being caged. I ain't really like this. You know what I mean? Like, two player for jail. <laughs> I wanna be around guys all day. You know what I mean? Then you see a fine guard, you trying to mack, and she like, nigga, you live with a bunch of niggas. Like, and it just really used to wake me up. Like, this ain't this, this ain't the end of my story. Yeah, me fucked up. Yeah. And it, it, and really, jail would let, let me know like I had a music career. Hmm. 
Like any yard I stepped on, any nigga tell you, I was the hardest. Ain't, Cause that's how it is, and that's a competition. Who the hardest on the yard? And I ain't, I'm not capping. It's real facts, real facts. People vouched for it. I was, I was the golden kid everywhere I went. It was always, hey, hey, hey. You know what I mean? And if you come in and you rap, you gotta come holler at Pat. For real, <laughs> no cap. Champ, right? For real, you, you, hey, yeah, man, you gotta hear Pat. Like this, this, the guards, they gonna, the guards telling other guards. So when you work the wing, I heard you can sing. Let me hear something. It was like that, and really that what gave my time leeway. You know what I mean? The Warden, can you come sing at the graduation? Hell yeah, what's the, what I get? What? Yeah, we having a wild jam for the after churches coming out. Can you sing? Hell yeah, what I get? <laughs> Everything was a benefit. I needed my time to be the easiest. Like I needed to be smooth. I'm just trying to get the hell up out of here. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the closest to the fruit where I got was using my singing to get benefit. Might as well use that talent, Facts. you know? And everybody fucked with me because I was hard. It wasn't no envious thing. It was just like, there was literally like everything on the yard want the feature. You know what I mean? It was like that kind of thing back then, like, for real. And I actually, crazy thing, on my, uh, I was on my way home. I had to make parole. I charged a nigga for a feature in jail. For real. To write a song with you in jail, I, need, I had a list of what I wanted when you go to commissary because I'm a goat. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and, and it's crazy because me and bro linked up when, when we got home and he don't even rap no more. Oh, for real? Real talk. Bro got a trucking business and everything. Yeah, but the fact that he was the first one of the guys to pay, like, to, I'm going to pay you. I ain't tripping. I was like, ah, right, you going to pay me? Well, this is what I want. And this damn near, like, you only had, like, a $85 spending limit. And I want $50 worth of shit, but, it's, <laughs> but I'm going to sit here and write. You know what I mean? And I'm a beat. I'm the... I used to beat on the table and do it, so I got to do the beat for us too. So when we perform this shit for other inmates, I need like fifty dollars, <laughs> for real. So when do you come home? Is music your main focus at that time? Off the rip. I come home. My mom was like, before I come home, my mom was like, what you, what you gonna do? What's your plan? And I'm like, I wanna do music. I had it sung for her on the phone, sung for her in visit. She didn't came to things they had at the the juvenile and heard me sing. So. She know, like, my son can sing. I ain't know, okay. You know what I mean? And she was like, all right, bought me studio equipment. And from that day forward, that's all I did. Every time I went back to jail after that, it was parole violations for being in my garage recording. Oh, really? Yeah, real shit, no bullshit. Because my monitor, they had me on a, a, one of those bad motherfuckers. I had like a thing on my leg, and when I go outside, I gotta wear this thing on my hip, like a, what they can call me on this motherfucker. Like, and these pieces have to be by each other at all times. Yeah. But me, I'd be like so in my head, like, oh, I'm late to go check in. I jump in the car and drive about a mile and a half and realize I don't got this fucking thing on. Now that bitch at home going off violation. And I'm like, come on, bro. First of all, you can see where I'm going yeah, because really. so you know I ain't running and then they're not going back and go get it. But I had a PO who was just a hard ass. Like he just had it for me. Like, yeah, you still not admitting to your, your crime. They had all that in my, my files and shit. And I'm like, I made parole, bro. I did my time. Whether I meant to this shit or not, I yeah. did my time. Yeah, and that don't matter now. Yeah, like I'm home. I'm not getting in trouble. I'm not catching no new cases. I'm not failing no drug tests. None of that shit. I wasn't smoking. When I came home and started getting drunk off the rip. That's what got me a drink and I ain't gonna lie, Progo made me an alcoholic. Cause I'm like, I'm not finna go to jail just from smoking. And I, and I know after a few months, this will stop. You feel me? Like I stop getting piss tests all the time. Then I have a little leeway. So I'm really gonna sit it out. I was home for like 40 some days. And that nigga violated me for being in my garage. Like, for real. It's weak as shit. Hell yeah. But I do 90 days, I come back home, and I, I got a new PO, and he more cool, you know what I mean? He let me thug. So now I'm really like starting my career. Now I'm, you know what I mean? I performed at a, a black party niggas home. My, uh, my team had a little party. They, had like, they used to do like a back to school drive giveaway and stuff like that. And that was my first performance. He let me do it, you know what I mean? So now I'm like, all right, cool. He like, I like, I tell him I quit my job. Like, I quit my job, but still leave that window open for me because I be going performing, I make money, yeah. you know, doing, I told him I was doing little soul, soul nightclubs. I went, I ain't tell him I was doing no club clubs, but he like cool here, African, he was cool. Like, and one day I'm performing, the club called Night Moves, and he didn't tell me he took a vacation. <laughs> Hell. 
Hello, Mr. Simmons, where are you right now? Click. <laughs> so I go in the middle of the club, and I'm like, next. I'm like, I gotta perform, I gotta help it go home. <clears throat> I do it. Next day, the man called me again, like, yeah, Mr. Mr. Jindu is on vacation. I'll be dealing with you for the next two weeks. Oh, wow. And I need you to come in to pinpoint your last night location. So my mama, like, I'm not going back to jail. That's dead. I ain't doing it. Like, I wasn't feeling that. Like, I, mean, I took that bitch out for like a month. I got caught. You got like, caught? Hell yeah. Like, I pulled over or some shit? Or? Definitely. <laughs> I want some dry shit coming from the studio by Walmart. And they stopping us, they just ask us, cause we walking. They're like, man, you got some ID? And I'm like, yeah. So I give him my daddy name, his name is Patrick too. I know his birthday, you know what I mean? I know everything. <laughs> and he's like, all right, so he's searching us. This nigga find my ID. I got my ID in my shoe. Oh, he found your real ID. Yeah, I had already like, when I seen him, and we kind of like cut through the alley, I already kind of like stuck that bitch in my sock, like, you know what I mean? That nigga stripped us, like, on some, let me see y'all tattoos, y'all gang members, like, <clears throat> when I kick my shoe off, he like, what, what you got in your sock? Like, oh, my, uh, my ID. So you told me you had no ID. <laughs> like, yeah, but you already got my information. I'm trying to, like, like let me see. That was just it. <laughs> but I came home. How long did you have to sit down that time? 90 days. 90 days again. God Parole damn. violation. <laughs> I come home, I'm back at it, like, but this time I'm full-fledged, like, I'm, I had a, uh, my, 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 all my partners, we OTH, we had a movement, we got other artists, we stepping out, we doing our thing, we pulling up to the club 100 deep, we outside. And shit, it just really took off from there. Like, I, I, I was home like a few months, same thing happened with the, the monitor, took it off. But this time I'm, I ran for a year and I established myself in Houston. Like, I had a little buzz, you feel me? I had made top 20 on the Go DJ music. Even though I was number 20, I was on that motherfucker. <laughs> it don't matter, you on that I was on there, right? you know what I mean? And that was hard to say, I, just, I had just only been home like four or five months. Hmm. You know what I mean? I went locked in with a DJ, I'm like, man, look, I got a record, like, I just want you to play it. He started playing it, and he got a lot of love in that club. And which record was that? It was called Voodoo. Okay. Which ain't even on no platforms, because I was, I was knowledgeable about Distro Kid or United Masters. You just put it on SoundCloud and YouTube? Or? Nah, I just put all my songs on. And YouTube, when you didn't, back then, when you didn't have clearance for the beat, it wouldn't let you upload shit. Oh yeah, it get flat. So I made one whole video of all my songs. And one video, it's just like <laughs> 45 minutes long. And you know what I mean? It's my, it's my, but it was some way to get it out because I'm performing this motherfucker. People know it. Other DJs was putting it on their mixtapes. I don't know how, but because I couldn't do it with mine like that. And nobody wasn't trying to teach me the game. They weren't trying to lace me up. And actually, YouTube is what told me about DistroKid. Like, okay. You know what I mean? It was an ad on there, and it was like, you know, independent artists distribute music. And I'm like, Pfft. you know what I mean? Just reading. That's, that's, I'm a guy who always want to read. And I found out about that. And now I'm like, all right, I know how to put my stuff on platforms. Like, you know what I mean? It's over when I'm official. But I, was, I had ran for a year, got into a little trouble and got locked up on another parole violation. But this time it's not 90 days. It's the whole 15 months that I had been home when I was on parole. Oh, wow. So they took all my back time. They're like, you keep getting in trouble, took my back time. So I had to go sit down for them 15 months. True. But I ain't go to no real unit unit. I was on a transfer unit the whole time. Chill, open dorm, like, you know what I mean? Chill shit. And that's why I wrote Rodeo. Oh, really? Yeah on that last little stretch. Huh. I'm playing chess with my partner, Deli. And this nigga used to freestyle and beat my ass, like, <laughs> for real, like. While playing chess? Hard, he from New Orleans and he could rap. And that nigga used to trash ass Pat. Like he had a new name for me and shit. So I used to, I'm like, I can't freestyle. So I used to write shit, like, I used to really write a diss track for this nigga. <laughs> but I couldn't rap it unless I'm winning. Because it'd be whack, I'm, I'm freestyling about beating your ass and you beat my ass. So I had to like really like get in my chess game, but he don't know that the day I beat you, I got a song for your ass. <laughs> you know what I mean? A song for your ass. And if I'm if I'm if I'm not mistaken, it was uh Dang, it's a Houston song. Like uh June 27th. Okay, yeah. I wrote a freestyle to that, cause it was like, cause he used to always do that little slow rap. So I used to 
I, that's a perfect beat, you know what I mean? And then I knew, I knew like the bass kick, I could do it, because I, I got a beat when I rap, you know what I mean? I couldn't just a cappella do it, I gotta have some, some tune in my head. And I finally beat that nigga, you know what I mean? And he used to always tell me like, man, y'all don't know good music because the old music was better, Hove, Nas, he used to always do that. And I was like, yeah, but some new artists lived in that era but can adapt to this era and mix it in one. And he used to challenge me to remix songs. Hmm. That nigga challenged me to remix Pony. Oh, wow. Hey, yeah, I didn't even get to finish that hoe because that was so hard. I couldn't even remember all the lyrics to the original song. So I didn't know, I didn't really have my homework together. But I went home, I finally made parole. I didn't drop other songs, none of that shit hit. Um, I'm humming a chorus on live, and the girl like, you need to make that a track. I'm like, I bet, you feel me? I went laid that bitch down, and it's been history, no cap. Like, hmm. I just started playing it on live, playing it at mixes, performing it before it, it dropped, everybody wanted it. And at first, I was just, what's your email? What's your number? I'll send that bitch to you, fuck it. Because I wanted to just get heard. It wasn't even about the bigger picture. I didn't think that big. I'm like, I'm going to take baby steps because I don't want to hurt my own fucking feelings. But at that point, everybody wanted it. So I'm like, I'm going to drop that bitch. Hmm. I'm going to fuck about no clearance, none of that. <laughs> yeah, you know genuine coming. <laughs> I know, but I was going to deal with that later. Yeah. I mean, everybody just get know, that buzz up. Everybody first. know me by now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whatever it costs, I'll pay it later. Rich problems when I'm rich. You know what I mean? That's how, I was, that's how my mental was. Like, I just need them to know my name, you feel me? And that happened. But not only did it happen, like a bunch of other blessings came in. I got to fire your managers. Like, you know what I mean? I had like a team now, and we went to work. Like, so when like real groundwork, we all around the city with it. We had merch, <clears throat> we had promo bands. So when you're a wristband, I, I'm handing them around the city with a shirt and a, and a flyer. I'm signing that motherfucker for people, like hanging them up on the poles. We went outside, like for real. Because we ain't had no budget, we ain't had no money. We had to put our own bread down and make some shit happen. You know what I mean? But that's what we're here for, you feel me? Then TikTok blew up. Did you put it on TikTok or do Hell you know how nah. it got on there? Every artist say yeah, that, like, nah. I don't even know how it ended up on TikTok. I'd be on the gram. If it would have blew up on the gram, I probably would have had something to do with it. But <laughs> she actually hit me. She said, man, you check your TikTok? Like, bro, I only got like 48 followers. <laughs> don't get on that shit, you know what I mean? That's <laughs> like, man, your song blowing up on TikTok going crazy right now. I'm like, send it to me. She sent it to me, it was this couple dancing. <clears throat> and they getting hella likes on that motherfucker. Hmm. So then I go look at my analytics. I'm like, okay, look, I'm getting an increase in numbers. I gotta capitalize off this. So I hit, that, hit them up like, hey, let's work. Let's push this, let's push this dance all over. Let's, you know what I mean? So now I'm posting it, I'm posting it. I'm, you know what I mean? So now I'm bringing it to my fan base, telling them, like, this is what we're doing. We're doing this dance. With this song, we're doing this dance. And it happened just like that. Oh. Everybody jump on it. Everybody doing it. And then I get signed. <laughs> hey, yeah. It really, like, bro, just like a blink of an eye. Just one thing happened. We're having fun. And then it's like, hey, we got a record deal on the table. I'm like, for real? I just wanted to get known. You feel me? I just wanted to get popping. And this really finna happen. All right. Let's go. Yeah. Get signed. We talk about doing the remix. Get Flo Millie on that motherfucker. How'd that end up happen? Was that your idea? Was that something they we, presented? Yeah, or? it was just something that me and the label just was going through, going through a list of you know, female artists because we wanted another female artist on the remix. Mm -hmm. And it, it just made sense. She had that, that bossy, but she had that sweet sound. The original, I had Big J. Big J, the gangster. You know what yeah. I mean? She, she snapped thug. on that shit, too. Yeah, fucking right. And she, but she was like that dominant female. like. She talking about flying a nigga out, you feel me? Like, and I thought that was player. But now I need something like, now I need that sexy, like, that softness. I need that feminism. And Flo is just golden on that motherfucker. Yeah. But once again, TikTok grabbed it. Hmm. I'm like, hey, you check TikTok? And I'm like, again? Again. <laughs> Not only this, now we getting Billboard placements. Now we getting Spotify placements. Now we getting, you know what I mean, Pandora. Now I was a face of Houston music on Pandora for like two, three months straight. You know what I mean? So now it's like happening. Now I'm seeing, I'm climbing charts. Now I'm like number seven already. Like it's just, it's hard. Like it's just crazy. Like number one on TikTok. Like that was just, and I don't even be on there. Still to this day, I, I, I go on there just to check and post. But I, I just, I don't know. TikTok just ain't, ain't grab me. Like I be wanting to do stuff, but I'm like, 
I'm real camera shy at times, you feel me? So I don't be wanting to do, do nothing I feel like I look corny. <laughs> I second guess myself all day, you feel me? But not only did it, did it blow up again, it's like 10 times harder. You feel me? And it's like, I'm getting tagged from cities I've never even dreamed of going to. Like, hey, yeah, number five on already. And I'm like, what? We need to go there. <laughs> yeah, if they what? fucking with it, let's go. Fucking right. I'm calls all in Vegas. They got a big old skate thing in there, and they always playing my songs. All the da- all the skaters be tagging me, and it's like, you need to come to Vegas. Don't worry, we coming. You feel me? So now it's like a demand, and now I feel like I ain't never even been to jail. For real, I don't even like only time I talk about it is when it's talked about. Like I don't really just be offering it because my body was there, my mind was never there. I was always knowing where I was going. I stayed in books. I'm always reading. Tell my mama, hey, send me hip hop weeklies. I need double XLs. I need to know what I'm finna get into. Who who my running mates gonna be? Like, you know what I mean? I was already preparing myself for this right here, I swear to God. Yeah. For real, for real. So how you like this shit so far then? <sighs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's a lot of work though, right? What? I and I be telling like people under me, I like you think you're having a hard time stressing, nah. And, and, and it's just be willing, like, what are you willing to deal with? Nah, I mean, I'm willing to deal with the stress I'm dealing with now. The lack of sleep, I'm cool. I take a little nap when I get in the Uber to the next stop. <laughs> but I ain't going back. Like, <clears throat> I always tell them, like, the shit I dealt with then, the shit I dealt with now is totally different. Like, even though it be on a bigger scale, but I'm in a bigger position to handle shit now, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, I just be, stre- like, people tell me, what you stressed for, nigga? You know you just climbed another number up on the radio, like, you feel me? And I be like, you right, no. Oh. I'll pay the rent later. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, like, it's amazing. I got, like, a support system. Like, these people right here keep me uplifted all day. Then I signed to a label who, like, family, so they make sure they call and check in, like, you good? Like, they be on my line, so they make sure everything squared away. So without them, without my team, I'd probably be sitting in a hole somewhere trying to hide, for real. Hmm. And now you about to hit the road with Tink for a few shows, man. Yeah, man. Big fire. stages with these, right? It's man. I ain't gonna lie, I'd be a little nervous, but now, like, after this weekend, you know, my team not even nervous. They like, nigga, you got it. So now I feel more like I got it. Like, I'm ready now. Yeah. I know your fans gonna be ready to see you. They better be ready. I'm bringing that rodeo outside. They know, they know I'm coming. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned your uncle earlier, so he's producing your next single, right? Yeah, Kamikaze. Yeah. <clears throat> and it was really crazy because he sent me the beat, and I, I really, like, disregarded it. I was kind of like, I, I told him I want a club track, but I just can't write to this song. Hmm. I'm sitting in the truck with my uh, with Big Al, and I'm like, yeah, Johnny sent me this beat, but I can't get it. He's like, man, you got to just listen to it. We smoke, and he turned it up. We sit in front of his house. He start going. I put my hands up on your hip. If I dip, you dip, you dip. I put my, he just kept doing that, and I'm like leaning back. I'm talking about I'm all the way reclined. I'm like, hey, keep doing that. And he just kept doing that, bit. And I'm like, I got it, bitch. <laughs> He's like, man, for real, write it. And I'm like, I got it, nigga. And I wrote that bitch right there in his front seat. No shit. I record that motherfucker, sent it to Salim. He said, that's it. <laughs> go, we record that, go. Like, and it was like, yeah, like jumped on the ball with that motherfucker. Oh. So shout out to my dog, man, because I, I could not care. That beat was just so, and he, he sent me beats like that all the time, and I'd be like, it's not that it suck. It's fucking super hard. Like, it's super hard. Like, nigga, you did your damn thing. And I wish I was right there when you made it, because I could have felt the build-up vibe, but he sent it to me already complete pack, and I'd be like, God damn, Beethoven. <laughs> For real, like, you got to go super hard, and now I got to go super hard. You feel me? But, yeah, we like Mercury. Like, we go hand in hand all day. Oh. That's my dog. He sent me some shit. I feel like everything we do together, and, and T-Ray. T-Ray do a lot of my stuff, too. And when I'm in there with them, too, I'm in my element. When I go work with other producers and stuff, it's like, I feel like work sometimes. You know what I mean? I feel like, all right, I got to come in here and do my, do my thing. But when I'm with them, it's kind of like, come on, y'all, let's have fun. You know what I mean? I'm like the... What they call the people who, with the orchestra, I'm like... The conductor. I'm the conductor of the session. With them, it's kind of like, I'm going to play you a few beats, tell me which ones you like. 
With them, it's like, give me some beat. Give me some horns. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like really like a buildup. And, it, and when it's time for me to go in the boot, it be organic. Yeah. Like, I just started freestyling in the boot with them. You know what I mean? It's kind of like they make it and I go line by line. Like, all right, hey, look, add this a little bit. I need a little more reverb on, on these sounds right here, on these, on these, whatever kind of instrument you play right there, add a little more drag to it, make it more dramatic. And bro, I swear to God, it's been, it's been crazy. It's so my, it's sort of building in my craft too, like mm-hmm. I'm growing. It's that growth, man. And then Charlie makes sure I'm dripping, so like my swag growing. Like everybody <laughs> helping me grow in so many different ways, you feel me? Yeah. Um, going back to Rodeo, did you know if Genuine gave you any feedback on the song? Yeah, I talked to him on the phone. Well, you did? Okay. Just like a few weeks ago, and he told me like, man, I'm King, you did your thing. Like, it's love. He said, man, I'm even getting calls about it, so. For real? Yeah, for real. And I actually performed with Bro on the 21st in D.C. Okay. So I can't wait to bless the stage with Bro for the first time, man. I ain't I'm like real excited about that. Like, I feel like that's a good cosign. Like, that's cause he could be like, man, man, why you touch my shit? He could have, it could have been like that for him for the, for him to feel like I did good. It made me feel so much better about the record. You know what I mean? Like, for the guy who was the original to be like, hey. Yeah, if he stamps thing. it, it don't matter what anyone else. Say, I don't right? care what nobody. I don't care what a blog post about it. I don't care what a comment say about. Ah, he should have left it alone. G said it was good. You feel me? <laughs> Big homie saying, "Hey, Pat, my guy," and his love. Like it was. It was like a genuine conversation. That he's excited to meet me. I'm definitely excited to meet the OG for sure. Yeah. Man, I can't wait for it. For that's real. legendary. Right Facts. Now, that's and that's how I feel about it. I'm like, if I would have never got a G cosign, if I never got a chance for him to be like, "You did good," I probably wouldn't have felt all the way mm-hmm. good with it. Like I was waiting for that moment. You know what I mean? Like. I wanted to talk to him and be like, hey, you like the record? Like, how you feel about it? Mm-hmm. You feel like I did too much? Like, I, <laughs> as an artist, I want to know, like, because yeah. I did it in favor of, man, g I'm going to like this. Like, when I, when, I, when I did, when I was writing, I'm like, he like, g I'm going to be like, man, don't touch my shit. I'm like, g I'm going to fuck with this. So to tell my partner, like, hey, G co-signed that, boy, you feel me? It feel good, like, for real, for real. No, that's hard right there, man. Um, so Pat, I know you gave some advice to the youth earlier, but you know, can you leave them with some wise words here before you wrap this up? Man? Um, don't give up and don't have a dream if you're not gonna live it out. You know what I mean? You follow it, you chase it. It's there, I swear. Yeah, for real. I know fans want to know album EP on the way. When when will yeah, you I dropped my new single Kamikaze June 30th. Be on the lookout. It's gonna go crazy, and I ain't gonna make y'all wait a long time for the video again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they had to wait months for that man, remix, right? What a year! A it's year a change <laughs> for actual video to rodeo. You know what I mean? But it was the remix, the original, just for a visual to the song. It was about a year, but I ain't gonna make y'all wait that long. I promise. Not even a month. I got y'all. I promise. Um, I'm working on an EP now. I'm working with a bunch of dope people, dope producers. I done work with D. I got that dope Cash One AP. I done work with Hitmaker. Oh shit! Yeah, Hitmaker. so I got some crazy, crazy shit coming. Just be on the lookout, keep tuned, tap in. I talk back, I ain't, I ain't no bougie nigga, so. <laughs> For real, and I'm willing to work. Yeah. And you got a shout out you like to give? Yeah, shout out to my team, shout out to 300 Entertainment, you know, in the building, shout out to my mama and my kids, I love y'all. See y'all later. And shout, and shout out to y'all for having me, brother, for real. No it's, problem, it's a blessing. It's legendary right here, uh, for real. Reverse that car, girl, I'm fucking right now Climb on the stand, the rail, hope you can handle it